I'd never done anything like this before, but I was determined to step up to Vic's challenge. First, I had to go shopping for components. OK, so this is what I've got. Two basic components. The radio control truck, which will provide the drive mechanism and the steering for our basket, and the granny cart, which is essentially the body and the wheels for Mr Reeves' robo-trolley. I could use the motor of the car to power the wheels of the cart and turn my cart into a remote control racer, but that was just the beginning. I don't want to control the trolley, I want the trolley to control itself. Making the trolley follow me automatically would be the really tricky bit, so to help me out I recruited Ed and Paul, two engineers from the University of Bath. OK, fellas, what's been suggested here by Mr Vic Reeves is that the basket and the shopper both have magnets. But I'm thinking, when the trolley gets too close to the shopper, they're just going to stick together, and you don't really want to walk around the supermarket with a trolley stuck to your butt, yeah, right? Yeah, I can't see that working. Well, you've got cans of beans flying off the shelf after the magnet. That could be hazardous as well. I think if we use uh, infrared transmitters, um, put a transmitter on Vic, that can send out infrared pulses, uh, the trolley can then receive them and tell what direction he's in. In fact, we used four receivers, one on each side so the trolley could tell exactly where the signal was coming from. We had to build a circuit to convert the infrared signal into drive for the wheels, and Paul had to design some custom software. The infrared transmitter sends out regular signals which are picked up by the sensors. The closer the sensors are to the transmitter, the stronger the signal. This software here checks each sensor's position in relation to the transmitter and tells the motors to drive or steer accordingly. When the software was complete, we sent it to the trolley's microprocessor via a Bluetooth receiver. Then finally, after hours of graft, our creation was ready. So we'd done it. We'd actually built a Follow Me trolley. But would it work well enough to impress Vic? Hello, Otis. Hello, Mr Reeves. This is it. This, this is, is the it. trolley. This is your remote control trolley. It looks a little bit like you're being followed by a fridge. Well, it's your design. Will it follow me? It will follow you. All you need to do is wear this special transmitter belt. Right. And then wherever you go, it shall follow. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's following me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite creepy. Vic had prepared us a slalom to test the trolley's manoeuvrability. So I'm wandering about the supermarket in a carefree manner. <laughs> Follow me. This is the future of shopping, isn't it? Not bad, it? is it? I'm liking it. Let's take this scenario. I'm at the checkout. Oh, I forgot some beans. Before the trolley could respond, Vic was out of range. Ah. So what it then does is it obediently waits for you until you've got the beans, you haven't lost your place in the queue. It does wait like an obedient fridge, doesn't it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> but the real test was still to come. Could our trolley cope with the winding aisles of a busy supermarket? Right, what should we have for tea then? Smash. All right, yeah. Smash and jam. Good start, Nat. Easy yeah. fried onions. I like the sound of that. Yeah. It was working beautifully. Brilliant. Here we are so far. It's magic. But as we neared the freezer aisle, our trolley was confused. The shiny surfaces were reflecting the infrared. So we're in an aisle now that has, it's got less shininess. So it should follow you with less difficulty. We're doing all right, aren't we? Not too badly. If only I needed a pair of tights. <laughs> Are you happy? I'm very happy. I think I put a lid on it to stop me shopping getting wet on the way home. Yes. I might use those pipes as rocket launchers. Good idea. But other than that, I think it's a prototype. It's fantastic. Yeah.